Welcome back guys to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. And today we have the preview of the Ottawa Red Blacks for this season. So inter interesting lineup here. I mean, still with Jeremiah Mazzoli, hopefully they're able to keep him healthy uh, for the entirety of this season. As honestly, I feel like the Red Blacks would have been doing at least a decent amount better if he was able to stay healthy. <laughs> so how are we feeling about this Red Black squad? Um, to be honest with you, um, I mean, there's some names that do jump out at me, like uh, Jalen Acklin, Nate Bahar, uh, Devontae Deadman. Deadman coming back from the NFL, as well as Drew Desjardins on the offensive line. Definitely some big additions there. Um, at, and then hopefully Shaq Evans uh, yeah. can, can come in and also – um signed previously from the ham tie hamilton tie cats yes i know my beloved tie cats after they decided to go a different way is braylon addison braylon addison who as was most likely announced a little bit earlier today braylon addison is actually going to be coming on uh for our third episode uh first in a long time of the cfl central podcast uh, so make sure you guys uh, leave uh, in the comment section down below maybe some questions you have for him. Uh, we're going to make sure we're definitely going to run at least a few of them past him and uh, hopefully have a good time. That episode should be premiering, I believe, Monday at noon central. I believe that's kind of the time we're looking at. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys comment, section, uh, comment that down below. But it'll be nice to have him on. And I'm, I'm curious to see with, with some of the new additions that they brought in, and with Jalen Acklin returning from last year, it's like, can they finally get this 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 offense going, this Ottawa Red Blacks offense going? Because with Mazzoli injured and with a little bit of some uncertainties uh, in certain aspects of the offense, there was a bit of those questions last year that we never really got to see. We never got to see the full potential of that offense uh, as there were hindrances that they had to it. Now, there, there was some play... They also kind of didn't help themselves in some certain ways where, you know, wasn't always playing the greatest or up to expectations. But when guys are going down around you, uh, it can definitely hurt the morale of the team. So that can have an effect on it. Um, I really like uh, the, the signing of Drew Desjardins. Really like in the sense of I wish he went back to Winnipeg, but it is what it is. Uh, Drew Desjardins, who was with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, spent some time with the New, uh, New England Patriots and has now come back down to the CFL and has signed in Ottawa. So smart signing there uh, with the Red Blacks, taking two CFL guys who had went up for some short, short stints in the NFL with uh, Devontae Dedman and the Atlanta Falcons and uh, Drew Desjardins with the New England Patriots. So good to have them back. Uh, Devontae Dedman, who was Rookie of the Year before, right? He was Rookie of the Year, the year that he left, was it? Some something along those lines. I, yeah, I think I it, it was so. like I can't remember exactly which award it was. I think I think it was rookie of the year. Something young person related. <laughs> the the other thing that I do like is just looking at their defense. Yep. Um, they do have Sherrod Baltimore, which kind of stood out for me last year. Um, they brought in a pair of former Tie Cats and Carell Brooks. Yep. And also, just looking at the roster here, I had them on here because I have by permission, uh, position, sorry, is Javon Santos Knox, who was a big uh, yes, player you were in our defense. And then there was also a few other ones. There was uh, Money, Hun Money Hungry, Money Hunter on yep. defense as well. And then there was uh, the big sack leader, uh, Lorenzo, and I'm probably going to butcher this. I do apologize, Lorenzo. It's okay. We, we all butcher names. Molden, the, the fourth. I see. And he, I believe, had 17 sacks last year. Oh, there you go. That's not bad. No, this is definitely uh, definitely got some some definitely some decent spots there. Um, an interesting thing here with the Red Black is that with with that number two spot, that number two spot in the quarterback definitely is going to be going to Nick Arbuckle, who is such a confusing quarterback to me. 
in the sense of Nick Arbuckle is like flip a coin before the start of each game and that's how Nick Arbuckle plays either he's on or he's off and it's just the the inconsistency with him so having him as your backup can be both the the biggest blessing or the biggest curse and it's because it's one of those things where it varies so much game by game um but I think we'll see him a little bit more in this preseason here um and I believe he put up a decent showing on that that first game i can't i can't quite remember um just because i just i have things that it it doesn't want to show up here i don't know why I, things never behave for me and yeah. and it's 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 funny because lost by other... one point to the alouettes that's what it was <laughs> there was other um other players that I was looking at for the Red Blacks, and another player that I was looking at was Lewis Ward, their kicker. Oh yeah. Um, back in 2018, he hit 98 percent of his field goals. Oh yeah. And I mean, ever since 28, sorry, 1998, 2018, he hit 98 percent, and then from 2019, 2021. And 2022, he's been lingering on that 83 to 86 percent. So hopefully, that's something that you know Lewis Ward can hopefully turn around this year. And yeah, yeah, I, I'm just I, I'm I'm so the the thing I will say about the Red Blacks that I'm very very confused about is kind of the direction of this team in the sense of that where like they. There are times when, and I'm not talking from a player standpoint, I'm talking more from an ownership standpoint, is are you buying, are you going all in and buying all these players and getting yourself that really, really hungry, successful team? Or are you kind of holding back a bit, get some good picks, get some young guys, bring them into the system and develop and move forward? And the thing is, the Red Blacks seemingly are kind of doing both in the sense of where they were they were trying to hire these guys and bring them in and sign these guys um, to make to make some improvements to the team now, but not a ton to the point to make a huge huge impact. Now again, injuries hindered that. However, it's one of those things where it's like with the CFL contracts being you know one, two, three years at most at this point in time at least. Um, it's one of those things where if you're going to sign those veterans to those, sh those short deals, does it make sense to not go all in? It's, it's, it's kind of that, that confusing dynamic because it's one of those things where it's like, if you go to a veteran and say, okay, we want to sign you for two years, we're going to go all in. We want to get this done. We're going to assemble the troops right now. It's like, okay, good. Go for it. If two years passes and you've like, half-assed it in free agency brought in some guys kind of gave up here and there which at times it's kind of looked like ottawa's done that uh, however i will say they've been more active in free agency than some teams looking at you edmonton um and um so over i'm just a little bit confused as they kind of like they, they kind of just they they feel like they're not like fully committed in in the ownership aspect of things, but it also doesn't seem like they're just completely giving up either. So I'm kind of like confused where where they want to go. Because I mean, like for me, when I when I look at this team, I think of this team probably realistically probably getting that third spot in the East. I think I I, I think I think Montreal gets bumped down to that fourth spot in the East. I don't I don't I don't know about Cody Fajardo. I don't, I don't know about that consistency, uh, but I, I can realistically see um, uh, Ottawa getting third in the East, unless Toronto really drops off. Like Toronto would have to nosedive. I, I don't know. I, they like they won the the Grey Cup last year though, so they can't like blow it that hard, can they? Can they? I hope not. Well, actually, I, I mean, hope so. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, one other thing that I that I was looking through that some people may or may not know if they don't follow the Red Blacks is 
Bob Dice was brought in as their head coach during the off season. He was their special special teams coach. Yep. Last year, uh, you got former Ty Cat uh, special coach, as you could say, Kahari Jones. Okay. How would you He's like? He's brought him? in as, at, I mean, he was like someone that just like kind of like looked over things. He wasn't really a coach, but he was he, like offensive. He was hanging around. Yeah. He was there. He was present. Kind of like kind of like what scott milanovich is for us this year just kind of like presence um he's the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach and then they also brought in baron miles who was with the alouettes for 11 years Hmm. i see so it's so it's different than you know how they we'll see how things go this year want to know what's funny about uh scott milanovich do, do, you, do you do you know the fun fact about Scott Milanovic? Because you you said that name and I just I, I remembered something. Scott Milanovic is the first ever draft pick in the original XFL from twenty twenty. From no, from two thousand. Oh yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. From from two thousand. Yeah. So fun fun fact for you uh, you people that like some alternative football and. Extreme, the LA Extreme. Get Scott Milanovic, and then don't even play him because they have Tommy Maddox. No, just fun fact. You just said that name, and I just I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't hold that in. Different <laughs> XFL legend. Oh my god, what a strange now, league that was. <sighs> now you're really making me feel really old. I'm making you feel really old. Well, that's not. My I mean, if, if, <laughs> I mean, if he played back in twenty, like two thousand. Yeah, well, he he did, he did. He was. I mean, I mean for the let, LA let... Extreme, Extreme. <laughs> but... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! But I mean, I don't have a whole lot more. Uh, is there anything else you want you want to add here about the Ottawa Red Blacks, or have we pretty much covered no. all bases? So. I think we pretty much covered all bases. So I, I, I say third in the East. What do you say? Um, I, because I feel like the Ottawa has more of the veteran aspects than what Montreal has. I will say, depending on how things go, I would say third if. You know, Toronto has that bomb fire. If 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 Toronto falls off a cliff, it's it's quite possible that Ottawa can even go up to second. Yeah, no, that's if. true. It, yeah, I, I, think, have a I think Toronto. I think Ottawa realistically finishes above the Alouettes, above the Elks, maybe above the Riders, really depending on their situation. Um, Toronto, if they get really lucky, not going to lie in the sense of where Ottawa is playing great and Toronto just explodes. Um, but yeah, realistically, I think they beat the Elks and the Alouettes though. So, I mean, that's kind of our, our view, uh, our preview, sorry, of the, uh, Ottawa Red Blacks going into this next season. Make sure to check out, uh, all of our other previews for the teams going into the season. Remember to check out on Monday, the interview of Braylon Addison. Make sure you guys comment questions that maybe you have for Mr. Addison, A- Addison in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Touchdown!